So moving forward into the chapter working with others, once again, there is action and more action. Faith without works is dead. So you can believe in God all day long, but if you're not carrying the message of AA or, or trying to be of service to others, then you're missing half the program. And chances are it's going to be hard to stay sober. Top of page 89, working with others. Top of page 89. Practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. It works when other activities fail. This is our twelfth suggestion. Carry this message to other alcoholics. You can help when no one else can. You can secure their confidence when others fail. Remember, they are very ill. So let's emphasize that point one more time. Practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. Nothing will ensure your sobriety like working with other alcoholics. Life will take on new meaning. To watch people recover, to see them help others, to watch loneliness vanish, to see a fellowship grow up about you, to have a host of friends. This is an experience you must not miss. We know you will not want to miss it. Frequent contact with newcomers and with each other is a bright spot of our lives. Perhaps you are not acquainted with any drinkers who want to recover. You can easily find some by asking a few doctors, ministers, priests, or hospitals. They will be only too glad to assist you. Don't start out as an evangelist or reformer. Unfortunately, a lot of prejudice exists. You will be handicapped if you arouse it. Ministers and doctors are, are competent, and you can learn much from them if you wish. But it happens that because of your own drinking experience, you can be uniquely useful to other alcoholics. So cooperate, never criticize. To be helpful is our only aim. So they're giving you a lot of directions here because this is before AA existed in the capacity that we have it today. So they're telling you how to go out and find other drunks to work with. But you can still use this today. You may be visiting a town or living somewhere where there isn't that much Alcoholics Anonymous going on. So by following these directions, you can find other people to do 12-step work with. When you discover a prospect for Alcoholics Anonymous, find out all you can about him. If he does not want to stop drinking, don't waste, don't waste time trying to persuade him you may spoil a later opportunity. This advice is given for his family also. They should be patient, realizing they are dealing with a sick person. In most cases, today when we do 12-step work, it'll be with a newcomer that we meet at an AA meeting. So how would we put this paragraph into application in that situation? You meet some person at an a AA meeting and you know that they're there for the first meeting, so the paragraph tells us, find out all you can about them, right? Well, you're not gonna say, give me your phone number so I can call your family and find out all I can about you, you're just going to have a brief casual conversation with the guy or the girl. If you're a lady, work with ladies. If you're a guy, work with guys. It just works better that way. Hey, I noticed you're here for your first meeting. I hadn't seen you here before. My name's Ken. How's it going? Oh, pretty good. You know, I'm just coming here because I got a DUI. Okay, so now you know the reason why he's coming. But chances are if somebody got a DUI, there may be a problem with drinking. Really, what happened? Is that your first one? Oh, no, it's my 16th. <laughs> you know, okay, well now you know this person's probably got a problem with alcoholism, right? So you can gear your conversation around how you saw, or, or in your own life, you weren't able to see how your drinking was affecting your life. Because that's obviously maybe what's going on with this guy. So just have a casual conversation. Don't say, tell me everything about yourself. But just find out in general ways what their situation is and how they ended up coming there. Page 90, paragraph 2. If there's any, any indication that he wants to stop, have a good talk with the person most interested in him, usually his wife. Get an idea of his behavior, his problems, his background, the seriousness of his condition, and his religious leanings. You need this information to put yourself in his place to see how you would like him to approach you if the tables were turned. Right, but once again, don't ask him for his wife's phone number or her for her husband's phone number so you can contact. Gather that information through a casual conversation with that person if they're open to talking about it. If they say to you, you know, I'm just coming here because I got a DUI, I don't think I've got any problems with alcohol, you know, or anything, I never drink, it's just a one-time thing, you know, then you're like, okay, well, you know, I hope you have a good time while you're here, and if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. They're not interested in quitting drinking at that point. But if the person says, man, you know, I've been coming to AA a lot, it's just not working. I keep drinking. I've been doing this for 15 years or whatever it is, and it's not working. Well, now you understand some of their history and you know how to approach them. 
you want to approach them from the place of, wow, I had trouble getting sober too until I started following these directions, and then that really made a difference for me. Sometimes it is wise to wait till he goes on a binge. The family may object to this, but unless he is in a dangerous physical condition, it is better to risk it. Don't deal with him when he is very drunk, unless he is ugly and the family needs your help. Wait for the end of the spree, or at least, or at least a lucid, for a lucid interval. Then let his family or friend ask him if he wants to quit for good and if he would go to any extreme to do so. If he says yes, then his attention should be drawn to you as a person who has recovered. You should be described to him as one of a fellowship who, as part of their own recovery, try to help other, try to help others and who will be glad to talk with him if he cares to see you. So if you've got somebody at work or somebody you know socially and they say to you, you know, I, I've got a friend that's got a problem with drinking, you know, and I know that you don't drink, is there something that you can do? Then you tell them, yeah, I'm a recovering alcoholic, this is what I've done, you know, this is my situation. And you say to that person, have a conversation with them next time they seem to be struggling and ask them, would they stop if they could? Would they be interested in, in meeting somebody who solved their problem? And if the alcoholic or the, the drinker comes back and says, no, I'll handle it on my own, leave it at that. Don't force yourself. If he does not want to see you, never force yourself upon him. Neither should the family hysterically plead with him to do anything, nor should they tell him much about you. They should wait for the end of his drinking bout. You might place this book where he can see it in the interval. Here, no specific rule can be given. The family must decide these things, but urge them not to be over-anxious, for that might spoil matters. Skipping down to the middle of page 91. Page 91, paragraph 3. See your man alone, if possible. At first, engage in general conversation. After a while, turn the talk to some phase of drinking. Tell him enough about your drinking habits, symptoms, and experiences to encourage him to speak of himself. If he wishes to talk, let him do so. You will thus get a better idea of how you ought to proceed. If he is not communicative, give him a sketch of your drinking career up to the time you quit. But say nothing, for the moment, of how that was accomplished. If he is in a serious mood, dwell on the troubles liquor has caused you, being careful not to moralize or lecture. If his mood is light, tell him humorous stories of your escapades. Get him to tell some of his. When he sees you know all about the drinking game, commence to describe yourself as an alcoholic. Tell him how baffled you were, how you finally learned that you were sick. Give him an account of the struggles you made to stop. Show him the mental twist which leads to the first drink of a spree. We suggest you do this as, as we have done it in the chapter on alcoholism. If he is alcoholic, he will understand you at once. He will match your mental inconsistencies with some of his own. If you are satisfied that he is a real alcoholic, begin to dwell on the hopeless feature of the, of the malady. So why does Bill say it like that? Why does he say if you're satisfied that he's a real alcoholic? If the guy says to you, you know, yeah, I may or I may not be, and, you know, maybe I just drank a little too much and I can stop on my own, you don't want to start talking about the hopelessness of, the, of alcoholism and the fatal, fatality of, of the mental obsession and the physical compulsion, because he's just going to be like, well, that's not me. You'll end up in an argument more than you'll end up doing any good. So if you've listened to him describe his situation and, and you're, you're thinking at that point, you're like, yeah, you know, chances are this guy's got the problem, then turn the conversation to how hopeless it is. Don't talk about the program of recovery yet. Talk about the hopeless state of mind and body. Remember what Dr. Uh, Dr. Silkworth and Bill Wilson discussed about what William James said, deflation at depth. The alcoholic has to experience deflation at depth if they're gonna become willing to seek spiritual help. Show him from your own experience how the queer mental condition surrounding that first drink prevents normal functioning of the willpower. Don't, at this stage, refer to this book unless he has seen it and wishes to discuss it. And be careful not to brand him as an alcoholic. Let him draw, draw his own conclusion. If he sticks to the idea that he can still control his drinking, tell him that, he poss that possibly he can if he is not too alcoholic. But insist that if he is severely afflicted, there may be little chance he can recover by himself. Continue to speak of alcoholism as an illness, a fatal malady. Talk about the conditions of body and mind which accompany it. Keep his attention focused mainly on your personal experience. Explain that many are doomed who never realize their predicament. Doctors are rightly loath to tell alcoholic patients the whole story unless it will serve some good purpose. 
but you may talk to him about the hopelessness of alcoholism because you offer a solution. You will soon have your friend admitting he has many, if not all, of the traits of the alcoholic. If his own doctor is willing to tell him that he is alcoholic, so much the better. Even though your protege may not have entirely admitted his condition, he has become very curious to know how you got well. Let him ask you that question, if he will. Tell him exactly what happened to you. Stress the spiritual feature freely. If the man be agnostic or atheist, make it empathetic that he does not have to agree with your conception of God. He can choose any conception he likes, provided it makes sense to him. The main thing is that he be willing to believe in a power greater than himself and that he live by spiritual principles.